everybody wants an avatar but not don't know why they need it so that means basically you don't do anything but you earn like so much of money so about the correlation with the having a career and just making money is like so close it's nothing about you know satisfaction right now it's all about getting grades you know in india that's how it works they say that a child should have a certain set of com- competencies right what are those competencies i think they should be looked at and and in the end the teacher gets a report so she knows okay i need to help this kid with this this is how i can reach out to this this kid is a visual learner this kid is a auditory learner this kid is a you know somebody who's more action oriented hello everyone and welcome to the robo sapien podcast where we dive deep into the world of startups and explore their cultures from all small to mid level businesses today's episode is a bit special as we have not talked much about the business as much as we have talked about ai and its impact on our society and how it's revolutionizing the education sector and for that we have sachi narula as our guest speaker today who has been a teacher a tech enthusiast and worked on many more verticals as you will see soon we really hope that this will be very insightful conversation for you and it will help change your perspective towards the complicated relationship between education and ai before we deep dive into the conversation please do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get the latest notifications so welcome sachi welcome to our podcast where thank you are... so much yeah today we are going to dive into fascinating world of artificial intelligence and its role in the current world with us today we have sachi narula who had experience of multiple verticals where she learned and taught how world works as a science teacher she is a tech enthusiast having interest and currently working in the field of ai and its applications welcome sachi thank you so much guys how are you i'm good how about you yeah we are good too so uh, shachi would you like to like introduce yourself to our guests yeah i think you give me a good introduction but i'll try again so uh, if i have to describe myself i'll call myself somebody who is very curious i worked as a uh, uh, a teacher for good amount of 8 years i have also worked with uh, you know companies like ge barclays etc you know around like 12 13 years back and uh, since last year I've, i've been working with a company called propgem and it's a silicon valley startup and uh, i help them with the creating content and i'm a content lead for them and we work on generative ai so that's about me that's amazing the generative ai is actually the most fascinating field right now in artificial intelligence everybody is getting crazy about chat gpt3 dali and all those things they, you know you just put in a few questions or put in a few demands and they will create a image for you they will answer all your questions you can do all those random thing that you needed to search for on google or go through a lot of books and ask people you can just get that done instantly just with absolutely the help of, yeah I mean, but uh, when uh, this startup actually started, it was during the COVID time, and that time, you know, the whole concept Chat GPT hadn't come, and GPT three was very much there, and uh, so our uh, founder actually had issues with the way online classes were going on. Um, you know how they were not really stimulating, and kids in general of this generation, they need something more stimulating. So that's how this company was basically born. So when we started working, or they, you know, I joined much later. I can't say we here. <laughs> when they really started working on this, there was nobody, uh, you know, who was really dabbling with it in the public. I mean, people who who work with data science, etc., would probably tell you, oh, yes, there's GPT three, there's this, there's that, but nobody really knew the actual expanse of what this thing could really do. What the madness that started last year in December. has actually what you know uh, it's like a arms race now like how they went mad for nuclear arsenal that's how the companies have gone berserk for generative ai everybody wants to do it but i think uh, if i look at it from a very personal standpoint 
I think AI in general, people don't understand what it is. And I I don't think so. There's a very good uh, textbook definition. Yes, you can have specifics there. But basically humans, we can actually, uh, you know, think about things and we can generate, uh, you know, our decisions based on what we, what the situation is, right? Most of the time that's what we do all day. So AI basically kind of tries to stimulate that kind of behavior, right? You have a certain environment and depending on what happens, you kind of act according to it. So generative AI right now, I love the whole fact that everybody's gone berserk. But when I see those deep fake avatars, you know, and the madness that people, everybody wants an avatar, but not don't know why they need it. That kind of bugs me a little, but that is again something personal that's scary that's very scary it's crazy because you don't know why you're doing it i mean at least we know uh, like i would know why we are using ai but most people are doing it because it's just a buzzword not really for the right reason or maybe it's cool i think it's very important to be cool in this generation for this particular gen for sure yeah i i agree i totally agree like everybody just want to you know try what's out there what people are talking about like if someone says that oh my god i tried that app do you know about that and people will be like oh my god i have to try it if somebody if that person has tried if that person has show it on the reel or it on a youtube video on a youtube short then i have to try it i have to check it out everybody is like that that you know it it is also because uh, we get fascinated very easily nowadays because we have all these virtual realities in front of us not talking about VR, but uh, the virtual reality in the sense that we have all these reels going on on Instagram where everybody is happy, everybody is enjoying their life, everybody is working so hard, everybody is giving their best. But that is something that fascinates us and that gives us a whole thing in our mind that, okay, if that person is doing that, he must be really successful. He must know what he's talking about. And that's why we should also try it out. Totally. I think uh, this is the current generation that they look at social media influencers. I think if you take it, dial it back to 15 years, people would look at movie stars, you know, usually like you talk about Hollywood, Bollywood, and we used to think, hey, these guys are so good looking. They have a lot of money. They must be really happy. But if you look at the, you know, the split side of it, we know it's not true, right? We know these people also struggle on a daily level. But the current generation, it's nuts because you think you are going to become a social media influencer. That means basically you don't do anything, but you earn like so much of money. And that kind of puts a very wrong idea in a young mind that this is what I want to do. Why would I study so much? Why would I rack my brains going into an IID or IM? It's very simple. I'll just start making YouTube videos. I'll become an influencer and... Uh, that's it. That's what I want to do. It's not so easy. Yeah, I think yeah. working hard has also become a myth nowadays. People think that don't work hard, just work smart and you will do it. Like, no, that's not the case always. You have to, you know, even creativity comes when you have worked hard, you have put a lot of effort into something and then you figure out, okay, maybe I can do it not this way, but the other way around. And that becomes more, that becomes the what we call creativity. And people do not, you know, get into that part that easily because they are not ready to work that much. They are like, okay, I'll post uh, 10 reels a week and that should give me enough attention to, you know, get uh, some money out of it. Yeah, some of the correlation with uh, having a career and just making money is like so close. It's nothing about, you know, satisfaction. It's not about loving what you do. I mean, I think all of them claim that they love what they do. Uh, but you know, if I look at kids today, they think it's too easy. That's a problem. You know, the verbs we talk about, you know, usual grammar class, we say doing things, eating, walking. I think most of them, they only work on a couple of verbs. That is texting would be one. Then it would be just browsing and stuff. And they're not necessarily lazy, but look at it. I mean, it's what we are giving them, right? The current generation. Right. So, yeah. I mean, we and, had no choice. We had no choice. But these guys have too many choices and they pick the easiest. I mean, I think anybody would. Right. Yeah, anybody would. <laughs> and like uh, the this chat GPT-3 and AI, all of these things that this current generation have, right? And we are talking about creativity. We are talking about easy way out. 
so do you think what what's your perspective on this part like uh, having this much privilege in your life does it kill the creativity in yeah in ourselves i think it's also about uh, how you're programmed and what kind of a life you've had so far in terms of experiences i find that uh, most kids don't really experience nature at all okay that is out of the question going out so they are not used to experiencing world uh, you know apart from what they experience when they're looking at something online okay so they are only motivated or stimulated by things they see online now all of these things we talk about uh, chat gpt and uh, you know ai whatever new things it's coming up with like dali and everything you just put in some prompts it will give you an image now at the end where do you use it where do you use that image where do you use that essay it's all on you right but uh, i think i think uh, this technology has come in a bit too soon that's only my perception okay simply because these kids don't really know uh, anything in life i think there should be an age limit that's what i propose that if you are like probably 16 years or older or 17 years or older that you know you get to use this platform cheating was there long time back i mean if you wanted an easy way out if you wanted to make a, a presentation i'm i'm sure most of us will agree you go to slide share download do some right. tweaks change the theme and present okay so laziness or has been there i mean forever there are people who are lazy there are people who are not okay but definitely we should have some kind of a <clears throat> um organization or you know leaders from all these tech companies who kind of look at how is this affecting um you know fields like education definitely though it's not harmful but i think it needs some kind of regulation definitely you know yeah. how is it be, how is it being used how can you use it i mean um if i'm going to write all my school essays using chat gpt3 probably don't ask them to write essays right ask them something different you can that obviously change you. that up yes you can ask them to hey okay you wrote an essay awesome um you know why don't you come and dramatize and present it or let me mm. ask you an assessment let me give yeah. you a why why uh why not we give your essay to somebody else and somebody's essay to you and then you create questions on it so you will have to change the way you assess things to actually uh stimulate this particular generation otherwise you just spoon feeding them hey you have a test you have to write this great just copy it down but in the <laughs> end they've not learned the verb you know the verb that's what i say they've not learned how to do the verb okay mm -hmm. how to research how to look for things how to do all of this thing so i think definitely we need some regulation and some training as well right so so there should be some self evaluation process right so with all this privilege as spiderman says with great power comes great responsibility <laughs> so there should be some self evaluation process so that you can keep yourself in check that whether you are learning or not i think as a kid nobody is going to do it you know it and i know it so <laughs> definitely we need to look at uh, you know institutions educational boards you let them use whatever i mean the, the best way to research would be go on chat gpt let's say it's a lesson on uh, akbar it could be a lesson on genghis khan okay so you are researching using chat gpt great awesome okay but then i'm not going to ask you to write something because that's something that chat gpt will do for you let me look at ways that how can i assess you i'm going to ask questions or i'm going to you know take everybody's questions and then i'm going to give you a test okay but then that time you can't have any technology so we you're going to have technology on technology off mode so that yeah. these kids can actually <clears throat> learn it can't go together i feel uh, it's it's too much of a what do you say distraction to not use it you know if i had it i would i would too i'm sure both of you will Every, everybody would everybody would be also have you know used the slide share oh. everybody has at one point find out some shortcut for doing their work and to make their life a little bit easier and i understand that but i also believe that if we find a way to which you know a student or a person can actually put effort into his work and actually get some feedback out of you know if you put some effort you will be you know expecting uh, the other person to give some feedback to you and yeah, i you, think we could use ai for that right we'll call it the reverse gpt you put in your essay and it'll tell you exactly where it came from how much you cheated and how good yeah. is it okay 
So I think that would be something the teachers would love, you know, like, okay, we've asked him to write an essay. Okay, let's look at it. Let's feed it in. And the system tells you, but definitely, I mean, it can't be technology on at some time for the younger kids, for kids who are just learning to develop their brain. You yeah. need to have them in technology of environments or mm -hmm. things that they have to do on their own, like, yeah. uh, you know, drawing on topics and stuff like that, you know, any, anything, I mean, anything that kind of, is uh, something that you can't get on internet. And I think that only comes from experience. These kids need to get out. These kids uh, need, you know, a multidisciplinary uh, kind of a learning. Right now, it's all about getting grades. You know, in India, that's how it works. Most of the other countries as well. We need to shift from that and, um, you know, in terms of what like NEP uh, that's been launched by the Indian government, though it's still yet to be, kind of inculcated in in the educational system yeah they say that a child should have a certain set of com competencies right what are those competencies i think they should be looked at and most of them should be skill based rather than just a score based thing right so yeah. if you develop a skill you get a tick mark there they don't look at grades like how much did you score is not the problem did you get the skill or not? And I think that's one way to kind of motivate kids. But definitely having technology, using it for uh, researching, for learning, perfect. But when, you, when it comes to assessment, you will have to be very smart in terms of, uh, you know, how do you design an assessment that an AI probably would not help you with? Because it's possible, right? We could have another COVID or anything worse. Kids will be sitting at home learning online. But then how do you do it? Whether it's making a video, uh, you know, that's one way I did it. You ask kids to make a video on Newton's first law. So if they understood, they'll make a video. It doesn't yeah. matter what you used. Okay. So definitely there needs to be a shift. There needs to be a regulation in terms of what is the age group. I mean, a six-year-old or an eight-year-old, please, we don't want them asking a bunch of questions because as of now, <laughs> we don't know what the answers are going to be generated. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, regulation is definitely yeah. Very actually, important. actually, by uh, creating some rules around it, it's very important. But uh, uh, the point I was going to talk about is that uh, creative process, right? Because uh, since I know that you are a very creative person yourself, you are always having a lot of ideas. In the last conversation we had, we, we talked about it, right? So I want to know that how did feedback played in your life? Uh, you know how, what what was the role of uh, getting feedback from people uh, as a cre uh, for your creativity and how do you think uh, we can actually implement those things into the current generation with all these now you know different platforms available where they can find a shortcut for everything so i'm going to start with my first experience with learning like i think the best feedback i ever got was from my students okay uh how I say, what I mean is, you know, let's say in grade 10 ICSC physics, you have a topic called calorimetry, okay? it's It kills you with the kind of numericals that can come. And most kids, they don't know what happened. Like, miss, what is this? I don't know. I don't get it. So I think for me, the best feedback that I got was about, you know, whether some kind of a teaching method worked or it didn't work. You know, for most kids, if you tell them here, these are 100 numericals, try all of them if you can do them you'll pass your test i think that that shift is very much required you know secondly uh, uh being a creative person i think i spent i've been brought up in an environment which kind of helped me in the sense that you know because everybody was doing what you're doing right like everybody is going to the library studying everybody's doing the same ordinary things okay but you wanted something more you wanted something different. You wanted to look at things differently. Or I would say, uh, you know, something that would be, uh, you know, something that you read about who kind of poke you and you want to try it. An example, I'm not the best artist around, but if I would look at a painting, I would want to try. As crappy as I draw, I would want to. Okay, and then, then I realized, hey, this is not something I'm very good at, but I'm very good at kind of, combining things combining art forms so that's how I learned that you know I'm not an artist but I'm I still love art and I'll go ahead with it now when I blend that with my current job I need feedback and I want feedback simply because I want to make something that 
the best out there. That's really going to help a kid. You know, so part of our company's thing is, hey, wh why do they have a teacher? How many AI companies have a teacher? I don't know. I could be the first one for all I know. Yeah. So the idea is if you're making, creating a product or a lesson for a six-year-old or a 12-year-old, whatever is the age group, you need to know how do they think. You need to know how, what are the questions they'll have in their mind even before they start watching. Now, the first thing that starts off with is, why do I need to study this? Why do I need to do it, right? Most of them have this first question they throw and uh, depending on that answer, <clears throat> usually math or something like hey you know we're talking about cells why do i need to know about cells i mean i know i have cells billions and trillions of cells so i think when you whenever you start off with a discussion with a young kid or even learners of any age group you need to tell them in a very nice humorous way that this is why we are studying this you know this is why this is important and this is what it's gonna help you kind of scale up so that's what i always keep in mind it's always easy to complicate things. I'm sure when you guys code, you know this. You can always write complicated code, but then you look at it three months later and you're like, what the hell is this? I cannot figure out what I did. So that's the same thing about learning. Uh, so learning is basically starting off with why am I studying this? Okay. And uh, how is this going to help me? I think we're very selfish, this particular generation. Okay, this is a Python course. Why do I need to do it? This is not from my curriculum. Why should I do it? So I think answering all those questions are very important. And creativity comes when you, uh, you know, think of either the other person. That how can I get through to that person? Okay, without talking to them, without knowing who they are. I think that is a creative mindset. Secondly, I think the more ex you experience uh, conversations, you talk to people. I think you also kind of uh, learn a lot from it. And I'm sure you know. If you talk to some mentors, you know, who people who are ready to tell you about their experiences, you realize every time you are doing the same decision, you're making the same decision, you will tweak your process automatically, right? If you've probably heard that, okay, this XYZ said this, maybe I should do it. So creativity is inbuilt. It comes from curiosity, I think, and the willingness to, you know, try something unknown, okay? And... At times, it's also very simple question. Am I good at this? Can I try this? Should I try this? All of those, what we call stupid questions in our heads, I think that's where creativity starts from. And then if you say yes to all of those that I don't care what the world says, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try doing this. That's how creativity absolutely starts off there. Absolutely, I agree. Right. Actually, even Steve Jobs said in one of his speeches, uh, he took a class in calligraphy, which was not a part of his course in Reed College. And uh, that is the reason why we have such a beautiful fonts in personal computers today. Because Apple was the first who presented a lot of different fonts in the computer. You can use different fonts to write down different documents. And he said that if I would have not taken that class, if I would have not had that experience, maybe uh, today's computers will still have those uh, block, uh, you know, block block size uh, fonts still. So I think that is an affirmation that that proves that okay, you have to have some experience which is out of the context, which doesn't make any sense at that time. But you yeah, can connect the definitely. dots later. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I mean, think about a chemist. I, I remember watching this reel of this guy who's actually a clinical chemist, I guess. And he's actually cooking, you know. The reason why they, they, it looks so good or it tastes so good is because he's he's following that same clinical approach, but he's cooking. So it doesn't matter where you pick up that skill from or that interest from. Like, for example, if I, if I appreciate things like handloom, I really like handloom stuff, okay. And I kept thinking, why am I kind of interested in it? Because I like to know why, why, how did, who came up with the whole thing that you would thread after thread sequentially. I think of it as a very complicated process. Then we had Gandhiji doing it, you know, making, you know, spinning a thread from a charkha and then making his own cloth. So interest definitely, but yes, they say, you know, you're the sum total of all your experiences. The current generation lacks in many experiences. I think going for a walk is something you'll never find a teenager doing unless they're being forced to do it. Um, they say they don't have time. 
most of them they say they don't have time but definitely i mean the moment you go out you realize that all of your senses from your this you know from taking in the whiffs from you know i live in bombay so you get really distasteful fragrances that i think to some good ones and you can kind of you know just smell your way into a good place okay and uh, you know the temperature to everything so so many things come from experiences i think that's what is very important that's where also we could kind of look at ai doing it you know and i have a friend who kind of suggested that okay we should have like a scanner the moment you enter a restaurant it scans you and it asks you a bunch of questions about your taste buds and maybe food allergies and everything or it can scan on its own now that technology bit is still a question mark because we don't know how we're going to make that but imagine if that could happen okay so when you walk in it will automatically give you a suggestion which you know you will like you know which most most probably you'll like so so i think uh, you know this is a creative way to use ai so technology can also be used creatively we think there are two different spans they're not right it um, just it just clicked the idea in my mind like what uh, it can be what your idea just you just said was uh when you enter a restaurant right based on your previous preferences and all your ratings it will identify you and it will give suggestions what is best in that restaurant itself like instead yeah. of asking waiter like what's good here yeah. and yeah. would it would i like it you'll get an automated generated solution for it absolutely absolutely and also think about it like you know like i like things which are sweet and sour okay uh, some people and then it will probably uh, because it can have a data set because if i agree to be part of a program it will also know about my medical history so if it knows like for me i have a very sensitive stomach it'll tell me hey you know what i know you like this but i think i want to suggest this for you i think that is a creative way to use ai even if we think about learning a teacher is the most uh, what do you say being a teacher i'm not trying to route too much about a teacher simply because i'm a teacher when it's a uh, it's an exaggerated job i mean you're not a teacher you're not just teaching you're doing so many things right so for a teacher for example the setup i was in i i was teaching six classes okay i was teaching them all physics each class had 50 kids okay for me to know what is every kid kind of uh you know not doing when it or where can i help them or all of those bunch of questions you tell me for somebody who's working probably 10 hours a day how difficult is that very difficult on top of it you have to recall those 300 names and every time you look at the corridor and you're like yeah this is the one so you didn't understand gallery but you actually you didn't understand this so i think that is one creative way to look at ai it can really help an educator a teacher to identify where is who standing where can i help them and then it's easy to act on because right now it's on guesswork you go you uh vomit the lesson i will say because that's the usual thing that happens you tell them blah 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 they go on their way they still don't understand they'll go for a class but in the end you'll realize hey they're still not scoring well so i used to ask them i said if you're taking my class and you're taking another tuition class you should be getting uh, 200 out of 100 but sadly you're getting 40 out of 100 so where is the issue i think establishing where these learning issues are happening and helping these kids is essential i think ai should be something that should be applied in that okay uh and you know restaurant is one thing but i think this is something that's very close to my heart and you can imagine your own life path i mean there must be so many times that i struggled with a particular topic like chemistry is my step mom okay chemistry and me never got together now if somebody would have probably explained it to me not like a rote learning form like they do right hey remember all these formulas by the end of it you don't know it is chromate or dichromate and then you have the question why is it a dichromate but the teacher doesn't have uh, you know the time or the energy or the patience to answer because i think the by 2030 they predict that 90% of all education content would be created by ai but i think apart from the content i wish somebody comes up with you know this uh, you know the whole learning equation and how can we make it better using ai because ai can just swallow in a student's tenures worth of records you know somebody's in great trend right now and give you an analysis where what where are the strengths where is the kid going down 
do probably a lot of analysis on data and in the end the teacher gets a report so she knows okay i need to help this kid with this this is how i can reach out to this this kid is a visual learner this kid is a auditory learner this kid is a you know somebody who's more action oriented can you imagine how the learning will evolve and you'll find that these kids are then much more happier in school because right now we have only one way of teaching this is this blah 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 what i'm teaching both of you right can you imagine what if this doesn't make sense to you what if you prefer watching something animated what if you prefer something that's only auditory or you like somebody repeating things a couple of times can we help that's i think something that we should be explored definitely yeah uh, we can surely work on it agreed i think we are giving away like, a lot of startup ideas right now <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. so i i put it here so i know i'm the first one okay <laughs> 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 so so like what we just discussed is the perspective of what will be the future of ai in the teaching industry for students right so like what do you think what will be the perspective from the teacher side of the future of techni uh, teaching industry with ai as of like, now it's not very really good about most of the educators i be they only look at chat gpt and uh most of them are like hey uh you know it, it's how the kids used to cheat on things etc so i don't really want that and i said hey that's only one part of it we don't really give kids a phone during their exam right you we know that but they they are definitely much more scared than they are aware i think everything everybody in the learning fraternity right now should be given a master class by probably open ai make them sit down and understand how this this work it's basically somebody like a superhuman who knows all the answers right but where do you use those answers is another thing secondly is it prone to errors yes it is so for a teacher to understand uh, is this my enemy or is this my friend you have to really give them a more a better a better primer i will say to explain that hey you know this is how it works so we are not trying to take your place there is nobody there is no machine out there unless you know we am talking about maybe 50 years from now which can actually replace a teacher only a teacher can look at your facial features and understand andar gaya nahi gaya right you know simple logic that you use because you can see oh they are whitewashed so you ask are you guys okay and they're like yes miss and then you ask a question and they're like lost and you're like okay let me start again you know that behavior that a human mind can do it's only specific to a human that we can take in those visual cues and we can see how distracted a kid is in terms of a teacher and you know like even a mother or you know for that matter and you know what is this one up to how does your mother instinctively know when you're up to rubbish and she'll look at you and you'll look all innocent but she'll know and she'll say what were you up to tell me that so- that happens to me a lot <laughs> I think it's so, happens to everyone. It happens to everyone even now my mom my mom will tell me acha your voice is sounding this okay your voice is so if ai could do all of that together that kind of voice analysis where it understands you yeah we have to ensure that the humans uh, you know stay in the picture but uh, i think definitely teachers learners even uh, parents need to understand that this is just another tool okay this will really explode evolve as the time goes by but it's not something to be scared of but rather used you have the substitution lecture okay you know when the moment you hear substitution you means free period yeah we'll do something what will you do something highly boring or we'll talk and we'll gossip about our friend imagine if we could change that experience we could have like you know like uh, let's pick up the 10 best questions let's see what the ai says and let's discuss more about it i think children love to argue so that's the best way to go the ai gives one answer other people give other answers so they need to be taught or rewired here that how can you use this technology to make your life easier i think that's one bit that's missing right now most uh, educators don't like ai they're just busy cribbing about it you know children will cheat i think those who wanted to cheat will cheat no matter what you give them you give them ai they'll use chat gpt no ai they, you we've all heard of our friends i don't know what you i don't want to comment on that 
everybody is used that one small thing somewhere and try to use it so cheating is something that you know people who are looking for shortcuts do and that's going to be possible everywhere so they need to get over that fear yeah but coming from open ai i guess if they're listening they would probably think about it yeah exactly yeah. i would I, my question next question was that only like being a teacher and also a person who is currently working on ai how like how can we make something that would help teachers use ai to bring the like lessons to life for te- for students so first is you educate the teacher this is right up most teachers are resistant to the tradition way that you might find the new age ones slightly more open to ideas but we need to really get them on board if we want this whole thing to be a success teachers have to be open to technology okay secondly i think you have so many platforms these days you know you have quizlet you have quizzes so many things out there that you can use in the classroom okay but the teachers time in the class remains the same that's a fact because you increase that uh, 12 you know from 7 hours a moment you'll make 8 hours so parents will come to the school and say what are you doing but definitely we need more professional development in this related field for the teachers so so that they understand why is it being done how easy is it to do it you don't need to code you're not going to sit there type in a bunch of words i think that's some of the educators are kind of scared of or scared of and in the end you know that same question that learners have that why are we doing it you know i met so many of them during a workshop uh and they all were like you know busy talking about chat gpt3 like it's some uh, you know spanish flu coming in you know i'm not kidding you know that this is what's going to happen i said you know what when google doc started like 8 10 years back and when teachers started using it teachers had the same like when i can use word why will i use google docs they didn't understand the fact that you can collaborate right because that idea doesn't come in because nobody is explaining that so i think even teachers being subject matter experts they still need help they still need professional development to understand that how is this ai and technology going to help how is it going to make life easier you as a class teacher you have 50 kids with like what i spoke about different abilities different skills so when um, the open house comes can you imagine if we could have a system and everything is fed into the system the system gives you an analysis that you know those two lines written in the report card abhar yeah. is very good at this but should yeah. do this right yes, that yes. All so the te- that. yeah everybody gets it that's how you do it so they call it you know soft landing you give them something they're very good at and then you do a but and you know this is something you work on but can you imagine we'll be more accurate when we actually have a system that can analyze it for you obviously as a teacher i have a personal touch i know my children i know who is what in terms of you know a human level within the classroom but that kind of you no know, time spent on analysis of data i will obviously go through it but that would be like a great help right i mean if it gives you a report in such a day and gives you proof that you know the reason why i'm suggesting this kid should do this is because of xyz same way you know you could have like a medical thing happening to the kids at the same time and the amount of uh, yeah the is happening and then you can yeah. use it or maybe not use it but it will give you some extra insight yeah because parents come and ask you because you know parents these days are much more protective than our parents ever were so if our pa- my parent uh, would go for an open house i'm sure you've experienced this the parent uh, will go and ask the teacher yes ma'am how is she doing and uh, whatever the teacher says is taken verbatim whether the teacher says that he should do this or she should do that and your parent will say ma'am you should not pick on him in class you should do whatever you want i'm not going to talk about capital punishment or you know slapping them or whacking them but in those days it was not so unheard of if the teacher says ki i feel like whacking and when say yes please give one or two on my, from my side also and you'll walk away because you believe the teacher right now we have systems i'm not kidding when you actually go and tell the parent with a very good um what do you say a feeling that you care about the child a lot that you want them to do well and you tell the parent that you know i think xyz should do blah 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 more because it will really help them now the parent will say but no 
that's not true so how do you how do you deal with such situations you have to you have the system working with you so you have actually a 360 degree report that the ai generates over everything the child has done in school whether it's getting a red uh, you know red what, what was that called we used to get those diary and marks right from that yeah 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 any mess have yeah 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 from any anything and everything you've ever done in the school during school hours is there in that data set and whatever evidence you do get you give it to the parent and the parent will like okay yes that's right and you give it to the parent and say this is why i'm suggesting this but that is where you need a teacher still right but give me the data that's where the ai comes in ai helps you kind of save yourself hours and hours of analysis to figure out why is this kid not doing well or what is a good subject what is a weak thing what could you suggest as a future career so i definitely think uh, for the educators they need to be taught about the system they need to be uh, taught how to use the system but thirdly we need better system right now it's very limited actually uh, even you know a few days back i ta- i was talking to a professor in us uh, he is a friend of mine so he recently became a professor he was uh, just a student a few day, a few weeks ago uh, he said that even he said that uh, his all his colleagues uh, when he talk about ai and chat gpt and all these things all of, all of them says that it's just a wikipedia on steroids it's not going to last long right so i think uh, that transition will take time and uh, i think if open yeah i agree that open ai will, if open ai will say something about it and you know if they will sit down and talk about it and people will listen to them uh, then maybe the transition can take a faster pace but it will uh, if that doesn't happen it's going to obviously going to take a long time for people to adapt to that i think you could have versions of chat gpt right imagine you could have a school edition you could have a student edition that would make it so easy right but you know come on who who am i kidding this just started in december but that is something definitely we should think about yeah but we don't need to worry too much about it you know because uh, even open ai is uh, recently announced that it is going to release a uh, software that is going to detect if the article or something is a script or code or anything is written by an ai or it is actually written by a human based on- no there's an app actually out already there was a there's a student from princeton who has come up with an app also it scans an essay and tells you if it was generated by ai so if you go to open ai not chat gpt if you have an account you'll find all of these things there right right no uh, but avans what i'm saying imagine i am a student i log in to chat gpt because you need to log in it's not open for all so the moment it sees my age it picks up on whatever relevant data it needs it will help my process you know it kind of suits a student you know like i, I if i have certain questions which are not uh, you know relevant to the field then i should be told that hey you need to grow up a little bit like how it gives you those prompts no it gives you those replies at times that hey i was only i only know things till 2021 uh so can you ask me something from there so something like that could be there for the students and definitely for a specific age group if not students that till you are 16 let's give it a safe mode right not the you know like slightly more safer version just like social media yeah yeah and um, definitely i mean educators are fighting it because they don't know any better right you have to understand these people have like they're working 50 hours a week then they have assessments to correct and so much so when they see hey there is something that's come up that's going to make it very easy for the kids to do something and they don't even know about it it's very difficult for a human to figure out like who wrote it so obviously obviously you get those feelings and i think they're justified but we need to have uh, more professional development in technology subjects i think if more than anything else that's what it needs because once you're more open minded once you've experienced it you do you realize you'll not fight change so much uh, you'll not say hey i hate it it's evil it's on steroids or blah 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 <laughs> so you'll definitely have a different perspective and you never got to late to learn and everything but it's a need for the art at least and that was a very you know insightful and a very different perspective because till now we have talked to many tedx speakers and many uh, influencers and many people who have started startups but to get a perspective of a teacher on ai 
is very you know rare to find nowadays because people are not ready to talk about it and since you are very open to talk about it and in a very creative manner it has been a really great conversation uh, but before we end the whole conversation uh, we would like you to ask us a question as uh, it's a ritual uh, on this podcast we ask our guests <laughs> at the end to ask us a question because we have been asking so many questions to you i know i love it so let me i've been always uh, you know curious about how people think how people get their idea i know i've asked you this before or we've spoken about it before that how did you actually come up with this whole idea of doing starting this podcast i want to know more about the name where did that come from and what were you guys thinking and uh, if it was a just a cool name to pick up or what is it like something you really thought about so uh, i'll i'll tell that story <laughs> please do abhas you can add on that yeah sure like the story goes on with abhas reading a book named sapien yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> it's a really it's a really good book it's a really good book yeah. one should actually it's a really good check book. it out if they want to understand the evolution how it actually took place so really insight okay different right. from darwin i'm sure so yeah definitely yeah, i'll try please. i'll take that suggestion can, it will change your perspective for sure so he so continuing with the story he read that book okay and he really liked that book he was like okay bro in the sapien book it was that it was this and we took sapien from that <laughs> he was talking so much about it and we had this idea we were talking about the names we took the sapien from that and like we are geeks right and we are techies so we are really interested into ai robotics technic technology and everything so we got that robotics part and took robo from it so yeah. creating robo plus sapiens creates robo sapien and which is also leads... a future <laughs> exactly which is also a future because yeah. in in future we are going towards the era of technology yeah. and robo sapiens suits that Wow, yeah. wow, that's one way. I mean, as somebody who doesn't understand, say Robo Sapiens. Do these guys mean something like Terminator? See, we've <laughs> grown up on that, right? We've yeah. grown up on the Terminator movie. Terminator is back, and he's going out again, and this this is back. But that's a very creative way to look at uh, technology and humans. And I think that is, you know, what we call a humanist. I think all three of us are humanists. We we are deeply human, and we trust technology. Obviously, I yeah. Mean, for all three of us it's our bread and butter right. but yeah. but at the same time uh, we are open to look at it from a different perspective yeah and i Actually, think uh, that's yeah. beautiful we don't really look at hey what architecture do you have what will it do but we look at it from a human's perspective that's beautiful That's yeah, really actually, amazing. it's also influenced by a professor at UC Berkeley. His name is Ken Goldberg. I've been following his work for some time. Have communicated with him multiple times through Twitter, <laughs> not uh, directly, but through Twitter. And his he has a theory that we are not leading towards a generation where AI will or AI or robots will lead us, but we are leading towards a generation uh, towards an evolution actually where we will be submerged. with the technology in the manner that uh, technology will be a part of our whole you know structure like right now uh, we use smartphones as a part of ourselves nowadays for most of us uh, we cannot even go to from one room to another without picking up our phone right so ai right. so i think ai robotics and everything will become a essential part of us because that is the that is where the evolution is going right we came from amoeba to uh, humans to right homo sapiens so uh, i think robo sapien is the next uh, evolution thing that's going to happen yeah i hope more human than uh, you know because i don't know why the word robot always takes me either to i robot or the terminator <laughs> generation of movies and it's a scary thought you know because i don't know how these guys actually conceptualize it's kinetic is taking over very ho- your film very hollywood or you actually. think about robocop okay so when i heard of robo sapien and i thought robocop you remember that movie right as yeah, yeah, yeah. made so yeah, many yeah, times yeah, yeah. and i and if you think about it they all thought of all these things and it's actually happened right so it's somebody's creativity which has come to life but 
I wish somebody regulates this whole process and I think all the companies should wake up to that rather than just think about making a profit because otherwise it's going to be a lot of uh, unemployment because so many things the AI is going to do for you that uh, we'll need to have a system to deal with this uh, because if you need less people to do the same amount of work, what are those people going to do? So that's one question that I think all of them have to come together, countries together, probably at a UN level in the next five or six years and really look at it. What, how, what are we going to do? What if we don't need these people to, what if we don't need teachers? What if we don't know? I, I'm just saying hypothetically, obviously you all, you'll always need this interaction, right? Yeah. But uh, what if you important. don't need, yeah, what if you don't need a QA person, you don't need a developer because a machine can write all the code, then what are these people going to do in the future? So my son asked me, now you tell me what should I do in my life? What, what path do I pick? I said, as of now, do what you like. Whether he, he, he likes art, so he's going to follow that. I said, but be dexterous. Be ready to jump from one place to another without you know, becoming too attached. Like if I'm a CA, what if the machine is going to do all the work? What am I going to do now? I probably might go do something else. So, but I have to be open to that. So I think it's very important this current generation gets really open-minded about doing a bunch of things. If not this, if not that, like a flow chart, you know, they have to really come up with it because we don't know what's going to happen in the next five to 10 years. Totally agreed. Yeah, I think nice. uh, that is the good note to end our conversation on because that is something from which we can take a lot from and we can learn a lot from and i think it is it has been a really wholesome conversation that we had with you and thank you sachi for coming to the podcast we are really glad to have you on the podcast today thank you so much i had a lovely time i think i love to talk and this is one place where you guys talk less and i kept talking and i uh, <laughs> well, thank you for it. that we really love it <laughs> Thank you. I, I think you should look at more educators next time, you know, like kind of mix it up because... Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, we'll look at it. Yeah, I mean, um, you'll, you'll always get a very unique perspective from um, educators or creative people. Uh, they may or may not like technology, but all of them have to end up using it at some point of time. So it could be something worth pondering. You might, you might be able to, you know, during a course of a podcast, bring somebody who's amazing of what they do could be an artist and kind of take them to the other side you know the robo side like you guys <laughs> like your name i think that should be an interesting transformation right yeah absolutely. Be something to look at yeah thank Thanks. you so much for having me i had a lovely time so thank take you care. so much Shashi. Yeah. we had a lovely time too thank you yeah. i hope you have really enjoyed the conversation and we did it too my favorite part of the conversation was when Sachi talked about how AI can help the teachers to learn about their students' learning habits and curate the best experience for each and every student. For the people who don't know me, I come from a family of teachers and for that reason I have a deep and immense respect for this profession. And that is also the reason I really enjoyed the perspective of Sachi on this topic. We hope you have really learned something from this podcast today and please do check out to our channel for more amazing content and do subscribe to learn more. Until next time, keep learning and stay curious.